Greetings, Bannister Road Baptist Church and anyone who may be tuning in who may not be a part of Bannister Road Baptist Church. We welcome you. My name is Sean Moore. I will be uh, doing this Wednesday Bible study lesson. I've been doing a series called When You Pray, and this is part five of that series uh, called When You Pray. We've been looking at Matthew chapter six, starting with verse five. If you have an opportunity to go back and look at the, the first four lessons, but this will be the last one for now. Um, when you pray. Today, we're going to look at verses 12 and 13. Let me say this right away. When you pray, according to verses 12 and 13, Jesus said, when you pray, you need to ask God for forgiveness. He said, when you pray, you need to remember to forgive others. And then in verse 13, he said, when you pray, you need to ask God to keep you away from sin. This is the advice that Jesus gave to his disciples. When you pray, you need to ask God for forgiveness and remember to, to forgive others. And you need to ask God to keep you away from sin. Andrew Murray said, where there is much prayer, there will be much of the spirit. And where there is much of the spirit, there will be ever increasing prayer. Um, here in our text, Jesus is giving advice on how we ought to pray. And what Andrew Murray is saying is that when you are controlled by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will lead you to pray. And if you are a, a believer who prays a lot, you should be praying guided by the Holy Spirit and, and welcoming the Holy Spirit to be involved in your prayer life. It's important for us to pay attention to how Jesus said we ought to pray. In verse 12, he says, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. We need to ask God for forgiveness. Everyone needs forgiveness. The, the word debt in, in verse 12 means dues or duties. Uh, that which is owed or that which is legally due. God had given man certain responsibilities, certain things to do, certain things not to do. And every man or woman has certainly failed at some point to do what is right. Certainly no one would ever claim to be perfect. <laughs> Therefore, our greatest need is forgiveness of our sin. The Bible says that sin separates us from God. Sin hinders us from having our prayers answered. In Psalm 66 and verse 18, Psalm 66 and verse 18, the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Sin hinders our prayers. Mature Christians are not afraid to admit that they need Jesus and they have a sin problem. Mature Christians avoid underestimating the potential danger of not confessing revealed sin in their lives. Confessing, confessing or confession requires that a man or a woman be humble. Confessing that we need forgiveness is humbling. First Peter says this, this way, first Peter five and verse five, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. It is unwise to be prideful and not acknowledge our need to be forgiven. And I want to tell you something that you may not know or you may know, but God is ready to forgive. The Bible says in first John. Chapter one. And verse nine, you don't have to go there. I'm going to read it for you. First John one and verse nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is ready to forgive. Isaiah 55 and verse 7. 
Isaiah 55 and verse 7. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. This is what God will do. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God is ready to forgive. Go to Jeremiah 33 and verse 8. Jeremiah 33 and verse 8. Here it is, God speaking. He said, I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. All we have to do is ask. Just like we did when we first came to God, all we have to do is ask. In Luke chapter 18, and verse 13, this is what we said in the beginning. It says, and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That should have been your prayer. If you are a believer, that should have been the first thing you said. God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. And God is a forgiving God. And I need you to understand this, though. It's important to understand that God is a forgiving God. But God wants us to be more like him. And in Matthew six and verse 12, it says, and forgive us our death as we forgive our debtors. Why would we do that? Why would we forgive our debtors? Because God has forgiven us. We must have a forgiving spirit if we want God to forgive us. Who are you struggling to forgive right now? Who do you who do you not want to be in the room with? You need to forgive them. We must forgive those who have sinned against us. Uh, someone has hurt you. You need to forgive them. Someone hurt you that was close to you. Oh, you need to forgive them. Someone used you or someone hated on you. Someone talked bad about you. Guess what the Bible says? Forgive them. When we pray. Jesus says, remember to forgive others. In Matthew 6 and verse 12, an unforgiving spirit causes pain and hurt to the one who refuses to forgive. When we forgive others, that is evidence that we understand the forgiveness, forgiveness of God. See, forgiveness is conditional. We have sinned against God and people have sinned against us. God has forgiven us or God will forgive us, but God wants us to forgive people like he has forgiven us as well. It is not right to receive forgiveness and not extend forgiveness. Look at Matthew chapter 18. It's not right to receive forgiveness and not extend forgiveness. Matthew chapter 18 in uh, verse, well, starting with verse 21, Peter and Jesus having this dialogue about forgiveness. And Peter asks Jesus, how many times should he forgive his brother? And he says, seven times. I say unto thee, seven times, but 70 times seven in verse 22. And then he tells them about this kingdom, this king who forgave his servant. And then when um, in verse 27 says, the, then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and he forgave the servant his debt. But in verse 28, it says that same servant went out and he found one of his servants that owed him. And he he he, he said, pay me that thou owest. And the fellow servant fell down and asked him to have patience with him. And they would pay him. But he, he cast his servant into prison. Because he that he until he would be able to pay his debt. Verse 31 says, so then his fellow servants saw what he did and they went and told his master. And then his master in verse 32 he called him onto him and said, You are a wicked servant. He said, I forgave you your debt because thou asked me to. Shouldest not thou have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And this is what Jesus is saying. 
that he wants us to forgive because God has forgiven us. He wants us to have compassion on others because God has had compassion on us. This is what we are to do because we have been forgiven ourselves. When we pray, we need to ask God for forgiveness. When we pray, we need to remember to forgive others. And lastly, when we pray, we need to ask God to keep us away from sin. Verse 13, he said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. He says, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Now, this prayer is not um, a prayer where we can just escape being uh, tempted or, or escape suffering or have uh, having trials. But what he's saying is that, Lord, help me not to go into temptation on my own. Keep me away from evil. Keep me away from my flesh. Keep me away from doing my own thing. Temptations come frequently. Um, those, some of those temptations, uh, that pull can be real strong. Uh, whether it's eating <laughs> too much, uh, wanting more than what we need financially, greed is a strong temptation. Uh, whether it's lusting, uh, never being satisfied. This is one of my favorite verses, Proverbs 27 and verse 20. I memorized it a long time ago because it's true. Um, Proverbs 27 verse 20 says, hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. That means you're, you're, uh, a person's eye will always want more. I mean, you, 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 you see a car that you want, you get it. And two years later, you want a different car. You, you see a house you want, you get it. And a few years later, you want a different house. You, you, it's, it, it never stops. We want what we want when we want it, no matter the cost. And discontentment and complaining is wrong. We should be praying, God, help us to learn <laughs> to be content with whatever you have blessed us with. Once we have been forgiven of our sins, we must be determined to ask God to keep us from sinning again. Not too many people ask God to keep them from sinning. Now, if a person gets sick, we quick to say, hey, pray for me because I'm sick. But we're not quick to say, hey, pray for me that I stay away from sin. And we can't just ask God to keep us from sinning and not do our part. What are you doing right now? To keep yourself from sinning. I'm telling you, as a believer, you should hate sin. Um, ask yourself, do you really hate sinning? I hate sin because people die because of sin. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. People die because of sin. One day, my relationship with my mother and dad, father will be broken because of sin. We should hate sin because sin separates us from God and sin separates us from people. And here Jesus said, when you pray, you need to ask God to forgive you of your sins. He said, when you pray, you need to remember to forgive others because you have been forgiven. And then he says, when you pray, you need to ask God to keep you away from sin, lead you, ask God to lead you not into temptation. And we know that. God isn't the one that leads us into temptation, but that's what he's asking. You should be praying, God, help me to stay away from doing anything that's displeasing to you. That should be our desire and that should be our prayer. It's serious out here. The, the, the believer is constantly under attack and, and trying to live holy is getting harder and harder by the day. But I want to encourage you and tell you that it's possible. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. Um, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But look at what Jesus said in verse 32. He said, I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, he said, I want you to strengthen thy brethren. 
And this is Jesus over here teaching the disciples over here in Matthew chapter six earlier. He said, I want you to ask God to forgive you of your sins. But in the process of you doing that, I want you to remember to forgive others. And with that, I want you to remember that you need to stay away from sin. The, 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 the more we stay away from sin, the less we have to confess sin. Let's be honest. We need God's help with that. Amen. And the way to get victory over sin is to pray more. And that's why I believe the Lord put it on my heart to do this series. I want to encourage you when you pray. Um, pray the, the, the example that Jesus laid out for the disciples. God bless you.